Buddy Heald and Miles Turner, they are the prizes that have been rumored to the Lakers for quite some time, right? They were the only trade that we really know of that was about to get done, right? This is the one deal that we know that the Lakers could have done, uh, and Jeannie Buss ends up saying no, and, you know, the rest is history. And now, Miles Turner, uh, he would be helpful right now. Now, I still do have concerns about, like, a Buddy Hill to Miles Turner deal, as I've relayed on several occasions, uh, but there, there's no denying that right now they could really use a guy like Miles Turner, right? Uh, especially with Anthony Davis out, uh, Miles Turner would be very helpful <laughs> in a pinch in this spot. Buddy Heald and his uh, shooting would just be a very welcomed addition. And uh, unfortunately, the Indiana Pacers are currently working on a deal uh, with Miles Turner. Now, there's two alternatives that could happen, right? Two options that could happen here, right? Either one, uh, Miles Turner and the Indiana Pacers, they will come to an agreement and they'll come to that deal and all will be right between those two. Uh, the second alternative is that they cannot come to an agreement. Miles Turner wants to test free agency. And if that's the case, then that could potentially open the door uh, for a Lakers trade for Miles Turner, right? And that would probably drop the price uh, for Miles Turner. Because we know right now, if the Lakers wanted to trade for Miles Turner and Buddy Heald, it's going to cost you a first round pick uh, for each, right? So the original deal in the offseason was Russell Westbrook two firsts for Miles Turner and Buddy Heald. Uh, Miles Turner, they have wanted a first round pick for Buddy Heald. They've also wanted a first round pick for, but in reality, uh, they it, it made more sense. Like, okay, the Lakers give up both firsts. You're getting two, you know, solid uh, pieces that could really help now. And you're unloading Russell Westbrook for Indiana. They're getting assets for Miles Turner. They're moving off of Buddy Heald's contract, uh, which they wanted to do. And it's just, it would have been a, a win-win for everybody. But now that doesn't end up happening. The Indiana Pacers, instead of tanking for Victor Wimanyama, are actually a, a pretty solid team this year. They're not winning anything. They're not, you know, no one expects them to win a championship. Even Indiana understands that. I, I don't believe that they think that they're actually going to win or anything. But the beauty of Miles Turner is he's still young enough to where you could have him for the next four or five years, and he'd still only be in his 30s, early 30s, right? Uh, so, he is a guy that isn't, you know, he's not 34 and it's like, okay, well, we might as well just unload him because, you know, no, I mean, he's 27. So you're in a good position to where even if you have him for the next five seasons, he's still going to be in his prime. So it makes a lot of sense that Indiana would be looking at that. Uh, and the, again, the Pacers are really kind of coming into their own. Uh, and so they would want to lock up Miles Turner, especially now that they are very likely not in play for Victor Wimbanyama. So now you got Halliburton, you got Miles Turner, you got a bunch of nice young pieces, uh, and then you could draft whatever other pieces you need. You got some salary space, uh, depending on how much Miles Turner signs, the dictates you know what you could get uh, and therefore you could go and, and land maybe a, a nice piece in the offseason. Um, but with that, that opens the door for the Lakers for alternatives, right? Now, obviously, the Lakers would love to trade for Miles Turner. They'd love to trade for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. But it looks like if Miles Turner gets signed, uh, the Lakers might shift their focus to just Buddy Heald and go and target Buddy Heald individually. Uh, obviously, they really need shooting. They offered a first-round pick for Boyan Bogdanovich. Uh, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what their plan is. Uh, when it comes to Buddy Heald, uh, would they be willing to give up a first for Buddy Heald? Would Buddy Heald even yield a first? Uh, and the thinking is, we can't get Boyan Bogdanovich because they want an unprotected first. So maybe we could get Buddy Heald for a for the same basic deal that you were going to do for Boyan Bogdanovich. And for Indiana, if they sign Miles Turner to an extension, it does make a lot of sense for them to unload Buddy Hield, right? Because yes, they would still have some cap space, but they would like to free up more and maybe go look for a piece that could really help them in their charge and in their sort of retooling. Because at that point, look, if you're re-signing Miles Turner, you're retooling, right? Because you're going to be good enough to where you're not going to be tanking every year. Uh, you know, you're probably going to be a play-in to playoff team from what we've seen. And so if you could unload Buddy Heald and unload his contract, get an asset in return for that, and free up some cap space, that's a huge win 
for for the for the Detroit or for the uh, Indiana Pacers as opposed to Detroit where they just had so I mean they had like 70 million in cap space even with Boyan Bogdanovich. So they're not in a position to where it's like, oh well we have to unload salaries, right? And and not that Indiana is in that position, but they don't have the cap space that they would, especially if they sign Miles Turner, which he's very likely gonna get 20 to 25 million at least so if they're paying him a max or somewhere close to a max uh then it would make a, a ton of sense for them to move off of buddy healed take kendrick nunn uh take patrick beverly you unload you get those two guys uh patrick beverly has been playing better as of late so maybe you could even use him this season if you wanted to uh if not you just you're waving them you're buying them out you're doing it for the asset and a move off of buddy hill's contract and then in the offseason maybe you sign like a, a gary trent jr right 23 years old uh got some good size to him uh as a good shooter, good scorer, good, you know, playmaker. He could do a little bit of everything, but he's young enough that he fits your timeline, right? You could have Halliburton and uh, Gary Trent Jr. as like your backcourt for the foreseeable future. You'd have Miles Turner. You'd have, you know, set. You'd have a bunch of really just solid guys in general. Uh, Duarte, uh, those pieces that could you could grow with. And then whoever you draft, uh, you know, even maybe work out some deal or some trade later on down the line if you need to. Whatever you need to do to kind of put the pieces to the puzzle. And if you're the Lakers, you finally get Buddy Heald, who you've been, you know, kind of trying to get for some time. Uh, he's been a Laker on several occasions now, and it just seems to fall through. And he would be much needed shooting, right? He doesn't really help the defense. Um, you know, I don't think Buddy Heald moves the needle that much. I think he helps, right? I think he definitely would help. And then you'd have him next season too. So it kind of gives you that piece to kind of hold on to for next season. But I still believe like, look, it's the same thing I said for Boyan. If they are to trade for Buddy Heald, you, you might as well go all in at that point, right? Because that, that's essentially your cap space there. So now you don't have any real cap space. You don't really have any. So at that point, you're just, oh, you're just, you, you have all the sense in the world to just take Russell Westbrook, take that other first, uh, or if you could get Buddy Hill for less than a first, like if you could do it for like two seconds, because again, it, it, it makes more sense for Indiana to move off a of Buddy than ever before, right? Beforehand, right, it, during the offseason, they, yes, they wanted to move off a of Buddy Hill and his salary, but Miles Turner was leaving. They just kind of wanted Miles. So it was kind of just a kill two birds with one stone. We get we get an asset for Miles Turner and we get to clear Buddy Hield's contract. Perfect. It's a win-win uh you know for us. That's great. But now it's it's a different circumstance, right? Now it's like, okay, we really should move off of Buddy Hield. And again, that it doesn't mean that they have to. It doesn't mean that I'm not trying to say like, oh, that Indiana has to move off of Buddy Hield. But it would be in their best interest to move off of Buddy Hill at that point, clear his salary off the books, and now you have a sizable salary to go get one, maybe two guys to kind of help put forward. And then if you're the Lakers, you get your shooter, and it's kind of a, a mutual win-win type thing. So maybe you could get Buddy Hill because of his contract, and, and although it's you know he's got one more year on his deal, uh, but. Uh, you know, if if you could get his contract and you could get Buddy Hill, then you could kind of hey, have this mutual beneficiary type transaction. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, ideally, if you could keep both first, that would be great. If you could give up, uh, if you do have to give up one first, then I, again, I really think you push chips to the table. You know, and then maybe go look at Spurs deal, or maybe you could do a Hornets deal or something like that. And use Russ to to take on, uh, you know, Terry Rozier, uh, P.J. Washington, and maybe Kelly Oubre or Gordon Hayward, something like that. And then, you know, if you especially if you take Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward, maybe you could keep one of your firsts or keep that first uh, if you didn't give up a first for Buddy Hield, uh, or if you did. However, uh, that would be great as well. And kind of now you go from essentially nothing to like, oh, here's we got a, a dead eye shooter. And Buddy Hield, we got some solid wing players. We got a go-to scorer and Terry Rozier. Like you know, and all of a sudden you can kind of right the ship. So it does make sense that the reports have came out that the Lakers uh, could be targeting Buddy Hield uh, going forward after the after the whole you know Miles Turner deal. Now, if Miles Turner doesn't sign, then I could see the Lakers maybe going after both of them and getting both. 
Because at that point, it's like, all right, like, you know, we're going to lose Miles Turner. So we might as well get something. So then if you're the Lakers, maybe you're in a position of like, okay, well, now we don't have to give up both first. That would be ideal, right? If you could still keep Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn and a first and get Buddy Heald and Miles Turner, that would just be just icing on the cake. Because then you could take that, you could take those two guys, take that first and maybe go get like a Yaka Pertle. Well, at that point you wouldn't want, like maybe a, a Doug McDermott and Josh Richardson. Or maybe you go get, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, Terry Rozier and, or in a PJ Washington, something like that. You know, you get what I'm saying? Like start stacking salaries to go get a couple pieces, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. I wouldn't mind buddy healed. Uh, I, again, I don't really think he solves all of our problems. I think he helps. I think it, it's a, it's a step in the right direction, but I don't think buddy healed by himself is coming and, and saving the Lakers. Uh, you know, this would be more of like, a. uh, Hey, you know, what better shooter are we going to get this year or next year? That's kind of how I look at it. But anyway, again, I'd love to hear thoughts and opinions. So let me know. Good, bad, ugly, somewhere between. I'd love to hear them down in the comment section below.